On the second day of Black History Month, my black African brothers and sisters proudly gave to me Lori Lightfoot still being dumb in her job. I've heard a lot of rhetoric here, a lot of sound bites, but not a lot of concrete solutions on how we get the job done and make our residents and our workers safe. We're doing it you every begging? single day. I think the follow-up is, and your solution is? I just explained it. We have been in Little Village working with those street vendors, understanding what the nature of the crime is, <clears throat> making sure that we're doing things in concert with them okay. to help them uh, 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 make sure that their money is secure, not use money, if at all possible, using um, okay. other forms of transactions to take care of themselves. She says that we're not supposed to have money on yeah, us. Yeah, don't have cash on you. What do you, what do you think well, of we that? Have, no, we have to have money so we can, because, you know, somebody buys tamales. So we have to have money on us to give change. Yeah, to give the change. You know, somebody comes and buys tamales with a twenty. You have to find money, the change to give him back the change. And everybody comes another with another twenty. So you have to have a another twenty to give change again. And now how are we gonna keep the change? Because we're supposed to have some change. Sí, para dar el cambio a los clientes. Sí. Nosotros tenemos que tener cambio porque los clientes no quieren pagar con tarjeta. Entonces ellos siempre vienen con efectivo, uno te, tiene que tener cambio. Yo pienso que la alcaldesa no nos está poniendo mucha atención, ya que no les está dando los recursos necesarios. También estamos exigiéndole a la alcaldesa Loliray que ponga más leyes estrictas, ya que estos individuos son menores de edad y los han detenido y a las 24 horas los han sacado porque no tienen que se les pongan cargos. No. No. Because she's a good mayor, but she have well, she has so many problems because you know they're robbing cars and everybody everywhere. They're robbing everybody. Yeah. That's you know that's my boss. He came before. He, we went and talked there to the aldermen. Yeah. But they didn't even listen to us the same way because they were talking about who wants to become the next alderman. So the so they had another things on their mind. Yeah, not yeah. you guys. They had not, not us. Yeah. Yeah, he was when they came and talked to us, it was like they were talking to <laughs> to who wants to become the m next alderman again. And the, and the people that sell the tamales, people that sell outside, it was like, oh, so what we came for the meeting, they don't listen to us. And so they got tired and they went and talked. Now we have a little more protection in the streets because now, now I see more police. So now they be watching more on us because I think the elections are coming. The next alderman, that's why he came and look on on us because he wants to become the next alderman. And once they become in power, then they don't care no more again. Yeah, that's why. Sending in police activity here. Yeah, because the elections are coming. Yeah, to to get elected again. Gotcha. Yeah, that's, that's the truth. I don't know if it's just me and my lack of ineptitude of being in situations of being robbed, but somebody getting on TV who's a political candidate saying you shouldn't be carrying money on you if you don't want to get robbed or looking at a store vendor after you've seen all these videos of stores and store vendors getting robbed out their money and saying you should find different ways to have money being distributed to your business is quite frankly the dumbest thing you could say to somebody, especially a street vendor, because they don't have access to all these different equipments that are put in place so that people can use their cards to give money for items in stores, at bodegas, at street vendors, all these places where electricity is not the strongest suit. All people showing up with is shelves, desks, and all these other things to make ends meet, and you just sitting there looking like, hey, 
We got an idea for you. Why don't you just do something else? Because you're putting it on yourself. This is not even the first time this woman has openly gotten mad at the victims of criminal activity for not doing enough for themselves. Disappointed that they're not doing more to take safety uh, and make it a priority. We still have retailers that won't institute um, plans like having security officers in their stores, making sure um, that they've got cameras that are actually operational. It's to the point where I just support anybody in Chicago Chicago making sure they got a gun and defending themselves that way even though I know Lori Lightfoot would still have a problem with that because self-defense is always a problem to somebody who's comfortable sitting behind a gate. It is weird how many times this woman has made a fool of herself. It's been documented by literally anyone with a brain who has seen this woman get broadcasted as one of the heroes in politics openly be a stupid human being during times of crisis let alone the fact that she's in Chicago and Chicago's not looking like a vibrant city. It's looking like a place full of crime. There's instances happening every day. And this woman is seemingly nowhere to be found. Oh wait, here she is having fun at a parade. Crime in Chicago, by the way, soaring by 61% in the first three weeks of 2023. More than 4,800 crimes reported. You can compare that to some 3,000 in the same period last year. That's how much crime has risen. I take great offense to this. My brother, my baby brother Christian was murdered on June 24th last year in Chicago. And what I just witnessed in that video with that mayor right there was her dancing on my brother's grave. There's so many victims of violent crime in the city of Chicago. So many people who don't even know how to pay for a funeral because they're so costly. How dare her do that to those families? It is ridiculous beyond measure. The only solace that I can take from this moment is the fact that she may not be mayor in the next two months. This woman does a very bad job. She's going around getting caught and under investigation for trying to persuade teachers to get their students to participate in the campaign. The mayor says she she acted quickly after first learning of those emails yesterday, but with the election less than seven weeks away, multiple investigations into the matter are now likely. A mistake was made. It's real clear that that should never have happened, and we are doing everything we can to make sure it doesn't happen again. Mayor Lightfoot apologizing for emails sent by a deputy campaign manager to CPS teachers at their CPS email addresses, recruiting student volunteers for her re-election campaign in exchange for class credit. Could you please share this opportunity with your students, the email asks. We're simply looking for enthusiastic, curious, and hardworking young people eager to help Mayor Lightfoot win this spring. My understanding is that she did a Google search and found a bunch of CPS um, emails. There was zero, zero, zero coordination between the campaign and CPS. That staffer sent similar emails in August to the city colleges, which says it then informed the campaign of the school's ethics policy. The buck stops with the mayor's office. And, you know, I think there's just been a pattern of using government institutions to advance a political agenda, to advance our campaign. Lightfoot's mayoral opponents pouncing as the city's inspector general, CPS's inspector general, and the Chicago Board of Ethics say they'll look into the matter. And at least four aldermen are calling for a city council investigation. It doesn't take a, a ethics professor to tell that this is something that's wrong, something that you should not do. The mayor says she did not fire that staffer, but did speak with her personally about the importance of maintaining separation between the administration and campaign. It is not looking good for you. It is looking like the end of Lori Lightfoot, but I'm not going to sit here and dip my toe in that because it's up to the people of Chicago. You have to understand, do you want somebody who's going to be a leader or somebody who's going to pretend to be your best friend? Do you want somebody that's going to provide solutions or somebody that's going to do random TikTok dances? Are you going to want to elect somebody? 
somebody who wants to keep you safe or somebody who's going to chastise you when you get robbed. I know what I would do. I know what choice I would make and it wouldn't be Lori Lightfoot. So hopefully this is the end of Lori Lightfoot in a leadership role and hopefully with this experience of being a failure and being called out 72,000 times, she will finally understand that just because she's a woman and she's gay and she's oppressed, it doesn't mean you aren't worthy of criticism, you sad, sad little woman. Expand on that. Well, I mean, look, look at my predecessors. Um, did, did people say that Rich Daly um, held, uh, you know, uh, uh, tea sessions uh, with people that he didn't disagree on? Uh, Rahm Emanuel was a polite um, guy who was a, a uniter? No. Women and people of color are always held to different. And subscribe to the channel. I will see y'all in the next one. Goodbye.